Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the nervous system of the Animalia Kingdom. That is, the Animalia Kingdom is really huge. So you have so many different phyla and under that phyla you have so many different classes. You have so many varieties of animals in this kingdom. So let us try to see how is the nervous system structured and how do the nervous system function in the different animals of the Animalia Kingdom. So we know these are the various phyla which falls under Animalia Kingdom. Porifera, cilentrates, the platyhelminths or the flatworms, nematodes or the round worms, annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms and vertebrates. So these are broadly the 10 phyla which falls under the Animalia Kingdom. Now we will see these, this is like the lower one and this is a higher phyla. Now as we go down this list we will see that the nervous system becomes more and more complex. So let us start with the simple nervous system. So let us see how did this nervous system actually functions in the lower animals like the porifers. So we will start with the lower animals and then gradually we will reach the vertebrates and there we will talk in detail about human beings. So let us talk about the lower phyla, porifers and the cell entrates. So how the nervous system actually function in these animals. Now porifers they do not have a specific nervous system. So no nervous system as such. If you talk about the cilentrates, they have the simplest nervous system. Please note, the simplest nervous system is found in the cilentrates. Now when you talk about cilentrates, one example that you can think of is hydra. So hydra is the most common example of cilentrates. Now they have nerve nets which carry information from the sensory cells to the muscle cells. So nerve nets are their organs or their parts which are specialized to perform the function of the nervous system. Now what forms these nerve nets? Now many nerve cells link together to form the nerve nets so that a net like structure is formed by many small small nerve cells being joined together. Here brain is absent so they do not have any structure called the brain like how we have it in human beings. There is no cephalization. Now what is the meaning of cephalization? Now here cephalization means the concentration of nervous tissue towards one end of the organism. So that was not there. So cephalization basically meant that if the nervous tissue is concentrated towards one end of the organism then that end resulted in the formation of the head region with the sensory organs. For example, if you take uh, the example of human beings, if you look at the head part of our body, you will see that most of our sense organs are located there, the eyes, ears, nose, everything is located in the head region, the brain, the nervous tissues, most of our nervous tissues are present, a lot of them are present in the brain. So the brain is also located in the head region. So how is that head region formed? That is formed due to concentration of a lot of nervous tissue towards that part of the body. And that part, part later became the head region. But in case, so that process is known as cephalization where the nervous tissue gets concentrated towards one end of the body and then that end of the body gradually becomes the head. But in case of cylindrates, there was no cephalization. So here the nervous tissue was not concentrated towards one side of the body, rather it was distributed throughout the body. So here nervous tissue was nothing but the nerve nets. So the nerve nets were present throughout the body of the hydra. And that is why you do not have anything like the head of the hydra. So nervous system allows them to respond to physical contact. So here in case of hydra, if somebody touches it, so there, there is some external contact or external touch. So that is recognized by these nerve nets and then it responds to that. That is it shows some movement in response to touch. However, it does not allow the nerve nets, does not allow it to recognize the point of contact or the point of touch. So the hydra doesn't get to know where exactly somebody touched it. 
Therefore, the same output will be produced by the muscle cells irrespective of the point of touch. So whether somebody touches the hydra here or somebody touches it here or somebody touches it here, the way it will respond is going to be the same. And how will it respond? By making some movements with the help of the muscle cells. So it will not make any difference. For example, in case of human beings, if somebody touches your hand, what will you do? You will not move your entire body, right? You will just move your hand because you know the point of touch because your brain is capable enough to interpret where if there is an external touch similarly if somebody touches your uh, say legs so you will just move your legs but in case of hydra it is not like that the animal is not able to identify where it is touched Therefore, it cannot detect the source of stimulus. It, it can detect the stimulus that, okay, there is some stimulus there, but where the stimulus is there, that it cannot recognize. And that is why it responds in the same way that is the output produced by the muscle cells is going to be the same irrespective of the point of touch. So that is how the nervous system is in case of hydra. So next is the platyhelminths, that is the flat warps. So let us see how is the nervous system organized in case of platyhelminths, that is the flat worms. So one example of uh, platyhelminths that you can think of is planaria. So the picture shown here is of planaria. So here they have a more organized nervous system when compared to the cylindrates. So cephalization is present here that means most of the nervous tissue is concentrated towards one end of the body and that forms the head region of the cylindrate so of the platyhelminths. So here where is the head region? So this portion is the head region. So if you see there are eye spots present here. So these are the eye spots. Just below the eye spots, they have the brain ganglia and also a lot of nervous tissue here. So this forms the head region. So they have a ladder-like nervous system. So when I say a ladder-like nervous system, basically they have nerve cords running throughout the length of their body somewhat like this. So this is one nerve cord. This is another nerve cord. And then these nerve cords are joined together. So these two longitudinal nerve cords are then joined together by transverse nerve cords like this. So that is why it is said to have a ladder-like nervous system. So two long nerve cords run throughout the length of the body. So these are the long nerve cords and transverse nerves connect the nerve cords. So these are the transverse nerves which connects the two long nerve cords. Simple brain or ganglia are present in the head region under the eye spots. So where, where is the eye spot and where is the simple brain? So these are the eye spots. So these are the pair of eye spots. And just below the eye spots are present. Here you can see the light yellow colored structure. So just below the eye spots are present the simple brain or the ganglia. So they also have a brain but that is not as developed as in case of higher animals but at least they have a brain. Now they also have specialized sensory organs or receptors present. So for example eye spots is one of them which act as the photoreceptors. So these are the two pigmented areas in the head which are sensitive to light as I mentioned. They also have auricles which are present at the base of head and that is sensitive to touch and certain chemicals. So this portion, so this base of the eye spot, so base of the head basically, this portion, this base is known as the auricle and it is sensitive to touch. So if somebody touches it or some chemicals touch it, so it will react. So here, so here you can actually see that uh, the head region which is formed it houses the sensory organs as well as the brain so most of the nervous tissue the brain as well as the eye spots the auricles they are all housed by the head region and this is what is cephalization so that is how the nervous system is in case of platyhelminths let us thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos Attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.